Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shones. Today we have the end, the final part in the story of the Water Lily, the Gold Spinners. And our prince now knows how to rescue his maiden, his betrothed, his beloved, and her sisters. But it requires some dedication and belief that we'll see if the prince can go through with it. This is The Water Lily, The Gold Spinners, Part 5. Full of doubt and fear, the prince let some time pass before he was bold enough to attempt to rescue the maiden. Then a crow said to him, Why dost thou hesitate? The old wizard has not told thee wrong, neither have the birds deceived thee. Hasten and dry the maiden's tears. Nothing worse than death can befall me, thought the prince, and death is better than endless sorrow. So he mounted his horse and went to the bridge. Again he heard the water lily's lament, and hesitating no longer, smeared himself all over with mud and sang, from a man into a crab, plunged into the river. For one moment the water hissed in his ears, and then all was silent. He swam up to the plant and began to loosen its roots, but so firmly were they fixed in the mud and reeds that this took him a long time. He then grasped them and rose to the surface, letting the water flow over the flower. The current carried them down the stream, but nowhere could he see the mountain ash. At last he saw it, and close by the large stone. Here he stopped and said, From a crab into a man, from a water lily into a maiden. And to his delight found himself once more a prince and the maiden by his side. She was ten times more beautiful than before, and wore a magnificent pale yellow robe sparkling with the jewels. She thanked him, for having freed her from the cruel witch's power, and willingly consented to marry him. But when they came to the bridge where he had left his horse, it was nowhere to be seen, for, though the prince thought he had been a crab for only a few hours, he had in reality been under the water for more than ten days. While they were wondering how they should reach his father's court, they saw a splendid coach driven by six gaily caparisoned horses coming along the bank. In this, they drove to the palace. The king and queen were at church weeping for their son, whom they had long mourned for dead. Great was their delight and astonishment when the prince entered leading the beautiful maiden by the hand. The wedding was at once celebrated, and there was feasting and merrymaking throughout the kingdom for six weeks. Some time afterwards, the prince and his bride were sitting in the garden when a crow said to them, Ungrateful creatures! Have you forgotten the two poor maidens who helped you in your distress? Must they spin gold flax forever? Have no pity on the old witch. The three maidens are princesses whom she stole away when they were children together, with all the silver utensils which she turned into gold flax. Poison were her fittest punishment. The prince was ashamed of having forgotten his promise and set out at once, and by great good fortune they reached the hut when the old woman was away. The maidens had dreamt that he was coming and were ready to go with him, but first they made a cake in which they put poison, and left it on a table where the old woman was likely to see it when she returned. She did see it, and thought it looked so tempting that she greedily ate it up, and at once died. In the secret chamber were found fifty wagon loads of gold flax, and as much more was discovered buried. The hut was raised to the ground and the prince and his bride and her two sisters lived happily ever after. And that is the end of The Water Lily, The Gold Spinners. It's an interesting tale with an interesting ending, isn't it? And my, there's some nosy birds. Just imagine if you could understand all that the birds were saying. It would be amazing and awful all at the same time. 
This is Dan Scholes from the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. We'll you find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening.